morning everyone, this is Rocco coming at you for another 11.4.7 drive. We are headed to Carl Sandburg this morning. This is their alternate Carl Sandburg route just because there's still construction on the primary route. Which this might turn into the actual primary route just because um, it is a more interesting drive. It's more complex, has more that can go wrong, and you know, more that can go right. But uh, yeah, we're gonna see how it does. Uh, so we had some interesting issues, I guess, if you can say, uh, on the previous drive. And so we're gonna see how that does. I'm not gonna do my full, full four drive today. We're just gonna do, I guess, the two of them. Um, plus, I think tomorrow, if not small chance today, um, I'm gonna be towing. If you look on my camera, I have my tow hitch on getting ready for that. I'm gonna go pick up a um, plate compactor from Harbor Freight. So we're gonna go see how that does towing and see if anything's changed. Uh, if you guys saw Elon's version 12, pause that thought, see if it does the same thing here. Yeah, so it swings out a little bit wider and swings wide right here. Stunt right around the shoulder. Okay, I'm pressing the accelerator to get it up to speed because there is a semi truck coming. So, yes, version 12. Uh, if you have not seen that clip, go to Elon's X account and watch the video, just watch the whole thing. Uh, it's a live stream of Elon using the uh, version 12 beta. And it's really impressive. Now it, may, it might not seem like much when you're watching it, but the commentary is the important bit. Pay close attention to the commentary. He says over and over again that there's no specific logic built in to say, hey, make a turn here. Hey, watch out for this cyclist. Hey, slow down for this speed bump. All, all it's done is analyze millions and millions and millions of clips uh, from yourself, from myself, pressing this camera button, from automatic disengagements, from their auto collection of data. It does it all automatically, feeds in millions of clips, the more training they have, the more clips they can get, and the better it's going to be. If you looked at Elon's video, it made one one real mistake. It tried to run a red light because of the green turn single change, and it thought it needed to go. Uh, and so obviously that was that was a mess up. But like, it's not like this version here it doesn't do the same thing occasionally. So, I, yeah, I mean, if looking at Elon's video. It, of course, this is in Palo Alto. Uh, I'll comment on this in a sec. Uh, so they uh, have a ton of Teslas in this area. Of course, Tesla's headquarters is right there. So you would expect it to do it extremely well in Palo Alto, which is, you know, maybe that's why he did it there. Perhaps he knew he was going to be in Palo Alto that day, and it's like, okay, I'll just do it. I'll do it. Do it this day. Why not? Uh, because he knows it's going to be the best in that area because it has tons of training data for that area. So it could be in this area, it just sucks because there's you know, not really that many Teslas in this area. Uh, but that's a very interesting video. Just watch it really closely. I know it's a little bit boring, but if, you're, if you really want to understand what we're about to, what's about to happen, that video is very important to watch. Because we are on the cusp of having, act, like, full cell driving will happen. Because they've made it so simple now. Basically, all they have to do is just add more compute power and they, it's solved. They, they just have to train more video. If it messes up, like if my car yesterday didn't merge properly, it will, um, as I disengage, it'll send that video clip back to Tesla. It'll get put into the compute pipeline, it'll see that video, how I corrected, 
and it will learn not to do that in the future. It'll, it'll adjust. And that's all it has to do. There's no manual programming necessary at that point. It just, the car just automatically learns over time, just based on viewing how the human corrects. And it sounds like they also have made it to where it doesn't, like, if you have a bad driving score, if you don't drive well, and I'm sure they use the stuff they use for their Tesla insurance, then it's not going to use your data. If you are a terrible driver, which is only probably, you know, less than 5% of people, where they, it's actually that bad, then they're, they're not going to use your data, which means the car's not learning from bad drivers. The car's only learning from good drivers. So that's good to hear. Um, it's, yeah, it, I'm still reiterating that there's a small chance there will be a robo-taxi next year. And 2025 is my guess to where we'll ha there will be a ro robo-taxi on the road whether it's a limited faction or whether it's expanded. It seems to do this every time. I think it gets confused that there's a car gonna be in my lane. It thinks it's gonna have a head-on collision, so it beeps like that. But yeah, that's very exciting. Um, and my job here is probably gonna come to an end uh, at that point. I mean, I, still, I will still make videos occasionally, but I just, I don't get enough views I appreciate all you guys that watch me. I just don't get enough views and stuff to justify like the time sink into this. I don't get anywhere near enough views to just justify the amount of time I spend making the videos. Just like I, I, if I'm gonna be honest, I need to make money from this to justify the time. So I appreciate everyone that watches. That allows me to at least make a little bit of money. Like the last video I uploaded of the Crazy Hill test made nine dollars a whole nine dollars for me to go down that hill and back up get sick because of it and have to spend probably about two hours doing the video editing process between you know moving the video over editing the video uploading the video making the thumbnail all that stuff about two hours of time like so record about three hours just non-stop just go 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 to make that video and so basically I got paid three dollars an hour to make that video which I will do occasionally it's a good hobby I enjoy doing this you know it's a nice hobby to be able to just you know put the camera on the car and talk about full self driving like we're doing right now as I'm you know going somewhere where I'm gonna go anyway so it's 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 nice nice to have. So we're gonna stop talking about that. I appreciate you guys, um, but let's pay attention to how it does here. So it needs to stay in the right lane. See how it? Yeah, see what it does right here? Um, okay, well it self corrected itself, and now it's gonna get over. I don't know if the map data changed here or what. So now it's getting over into this lane. That's what it should do. Is stay here. Uh, you can stay in the right lane out of that. I don't know why it wants to get all immediately over in the left lane. And maybe that has to do with Mike's turn. It's misjudging the distance here. His is an immediate left. Like you have to get in the left lane immediately. Um, but this one, you have plenty of time to get over. And I don't like, honestly, I don't like that it's doing this. I think once I know we're on version 12 and it's like, they're, they have enough processing power to analyze these video clips. Oh, okay. Um, I had to press the accelerator. It was about to stop in the middle of the road right there. Um, then I will probably disengage more often to do like just just to make it as good as it could possibly be. I just disengage everywhere where it's not as good as I want it to be, where it's not doing everything I would do. Is it necessary all the time? Absolutely not. Like, there, none of those disengagements are necessary. It just would help improve the experience to a passenger if they were, you know, being driven around. 
it's something we have to pay attention to when they have the compute power, which will probably be next year, uh, is the guess. I, if we don't have version 12 by next year, I'd be surprised, based on what it looks like in Palo Alto. If I had to guess a lot again, they're probably focusing clips just of that area, um, just where Elon drives, is where that's being focused on, so Austin, Texas, Palo Alto, and all that stuff. It would make sense to me that uh, he hit, that is trained because it takes so much compute power. It's only trained on that area. So for it to be as good as it is, where what his video shows, it's going to require you know thousands of times more compute power uh, to just you know train everyone's area. Obviously, a lot of areas overlap, but it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of compute power. Which is why I still say 2025, like, we, well, the 2024 potential is, it's going to be like San Francisco, somewhere in California where there's a ton of Teslas, and making sure not a car coming, and yeah, so where there's a ton of Teslas, and it's just going to do better in those areas, go ahead and up the speed here. So one thing I, yeah, speaking of speed, one thing that was a big note in that video you should pay close attention to is how it adjusts speed. He had the max speed set to 85 mile an hour uh, on his car. And he said in the video that the car goes to speed that would feel natural for the area. I always have an issue right when we start this drive that the speed limit says 25, but it's a 45 mile an hour road. And so I have to up it every single time. So what the car is doing now in his version 12 is it's adjusting speed naturally based on the surroundings. Like, how fast should you go for this area? You know, does it see a school zone? Okay, let's slow down a little bit. Does it see people walking around? Let's slow down a little bit. Even if the speed limit's 30, if there's people in the road, like walking alongside of the road, let's slow down, let's give them space. The car does it the same way a human would. Like, we don't need a speed limit to know how, what an appropriate speed is to go on a road that we just don't. Now it would be, it, we, the only reason we need a speed limit is so we're, we don't have to worry about getting a ticket. That, that's the reality. If you just look at the fundamentals, we don't need speed limit signs to be able to drive on a road. Speed limit signs are there to tell us, okay, stay in this speed range so it's, you know, safe. Okay, so great. I don't know if I've gotten this video on record of zero disengagements yet. We still have a chance to get into disengagement at this next turn, but otherwise that's all we have. We have one turn and we're, we're done. But this route is, cons two previous times we've gotten zero disengagements. So definitely being a little bit slow, I would have been really annoyed with the car if I was the car behind mine just now. And so what it's done well a couple times, let's see if it does it again. Yeah, great. That was that was good. That was that was perfect, actually. So let's end this trip here. Let's slow down. And yeah, zero dis disengagements on that drive. I think this is the first time I got it on video, but I've had it twice before. Uh, an 11, that 4, that 6. It's just... Yeah, I, these videos I'm not going to do very often anymore. Um, I do it for you guys, because I think you guys want to see is it really anything different. And it turns out, I don't think that's the case. There's 11, that 4, that 7 seems like minor bug fixes. And that's about it. They're just trying to refine it and get it ready for... Get it ready for version 4. Because obviously they need to do that requirement, as well as then they're focused on a version 12. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I'm gonna let you guys go. A lot of talk in this video, but I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.